Okay guys, welcome back. This video is a continuation of the previous one, link in the description below. If you haven't watched it yet, please watch it first before continuing on this video. Okay, so our topic for today is still on the analysis of a 3 hinge arc. But in this video, we'll focus on the second type of this structure, the one with external supports lying on different elevation. Okay, I will show you how we analyze this structure by walking you through the solution to this example. Suppose we are given with a 3 hinge arc subjected to a uniformly distributed load with a magnitude of 10 kN per meter and a concentrated load with a magnitude of 15 kN directed to the left acting at the point shown in the figure. So what we need to do first is, of course, to draw the free body diagram. Now, since all supports are hinges, we will only have reactions along the x and y axis. And remember, in constructing the free body diagram, always include all the applied forces. And of course, we have to name the reactions. At point A, we have Rax and Ray. At point B, we have RBX and RBY. And so this is the free body diagram for the whole structure. And of course, we also have the free body diagram for each member of the structure. For members AC and BC. At point C, along the x-axis, we have RCX. Notice that these two forces have opposite direction. That is because we followed Newton's third law of motion. That is, for every action, there's always equal and opposite reaction. And also remember that the direction of these forces are just assumed. Therefore, we can just flip its direction and it will actually does not matter. What's important is these two equal forces should have opposite direction. And we also have reactions along Y. We have RCY. And the same with RCX, it should follow the Newton's third law of motion. So these are the free body diagrams we need to fully analyze this structure. We have the free body diagram for the whole structure and the free body diagram for each member of this structure. Now using the free body diagram for the whole structure, we'll get the sum of the moments at point P. And since the structure should be in state of equilibrium, the summation of moments at point B is therefore equal to zero. Now taking the clockwise moment as the positive moment, we'll have RAX times two plus RAY times five minus 15 times 3.5 minus 10 times five times 2.5 equal to zero. Simplifying this equation, we'll have 2RAX plus 5RAY minus 52.5 minus 125 equal to 0. Now simplifying this further and transforming this equation into its standard form, we'll get 2RAX plus 5RAY equal to 177.5. Now take note that on this equation, there are two unknowns. And that means that we cannot solve this equation, or at least not just yet. Because in order to solve this, we have to find another equation that involves the same variable, our ax and our ay. Now perhaps we can find it if we sum the moments again, but this time at point A, let's just try. So if we take the clockwise moment as the positive moment, we'll have RBX times 2 minus RBY times 5 minus 15 times 1.5 plus 10 times 5 times 2.5 equal to 0. Simplifying this equation, we'll get 2RBX minus 5RBY minus 22.5 plus 125 equal to 0. Simplifying this further and transforming this equation into its standard form, we'll have 2RBX minus 5RBY equal to negative 102.5. 
Now, notice that these two equations contains different sets of unknowns. That means that you cannot solve this yet. But it doesn't mean that we have to discard this solution. In fact, I will just put these equations here for our reference later. Now this time, I will use the free body diagram for member AC. And I will sum the moments at point C, which should be also equal to zero because again, our structure is in state of equilibrium. Taking the clockwise moment as the positive moment, we have negative RAX times 3 plus RAY times 2 minus 10 times 2 times 1 equal to 0. Simplifying this equation, we'll have negative 3RAX plus 2RAY minus 20 equal to 0. Transforming this equation into its standard form, we have 3RAX minus 2RAY equal to negative 20. Now, if we refer to the previous equations we have created, you can see that we already have an equation involving RAX and RAY. So, technically, we can already solve for the magnitude of RAX and RAY. But let's just take our solution in order. So, let's just find all the equations we need first before solving for the actual reactions. So from this equation, the summation of moments at point A equal to 0, we'll take clockwise moment as the positive moment, then we'll have negative RCX times 3 minus RCY times 2 plus 10 times 2 times 1 equal to 0. Simplifying this equation, we have negative 3RCX minus 2RCY plus 20 equal to 0. Now, transforming this equation into its standard form, we have 3RCX plus 2RCY equal to 20. Next, I will use the free body diagram for member BC. Summation of moments at point C equal to 0. Taking clockwise moment as the positive moment, we'll have RBX times 5 minus RBY times 3 plus 15 times 1.5 plus 10 times 3 times 1.5 equal to 0. Simplifying this equation, we'll have 5RBX minus 3RBY plus 22.5 plus 45 equal to 0. Simplifying this further and of course transforming this equation into its standard form, we'll get 5RBX minus 3RBY equal to negative 67.5. Now, summation of moments at point B equal to 0, also taking clockwise moment as the positive moment, we'll have RCX times 5 minus RCY times 3 minus 15 times 3.5 minus 10 times 3 times 1.5 equal to 0. Simplifying this equation, we'll have 5RCX minus 3RCY minus 52.5 minus 45 equal to 0. Transforming this equation into its standard form, we'll get 5RCX minus 3RCY equal to 97.5. Now, these are all the equations we need to solve for the reaction. Now, the next step of our solution is pretty much basic. We will solve for the unknowns using the system of linear equations, which I think you are all familiar naman. So what we need to do is to pair up equations involving the same unknowns. Now, using equations 1 and 3, we will solve for the value of RAX and RAY. We will use the method of elimination. This time, I will eliminate the variable RAX. And in order to do that, we have to find a way to make its numerical coefficient the same for both equations. So we will multiply the first equation by 3 and the second equation by 2. So we have 3 times 2 RAX is 6 RAX. 3 times 5 RAY is positive 15 RAY. 
3 times 177.5 is 532.5. Now for the second equation, we have 2 times 3RAX, we have 6RAX. 2 times negative 2RAY, we have negative 4RAY. 2 times negative 20, we have negative 40. Now to eliminate RAX, we'll subtract these two equations. So we'll have 0 plus 19RAY equal to 572.5. Solving for the value of RAY, we'll get RAY equal to 30.13 kN. Now substituting RAY to any of the two equations we used, say we use equation 3, we have 3RAX minus 2 times 30.13 equal to negative 20. Simplifying this equation and solving for the value of RAX, we'll have RAX equal to 13.42 kN. Now using equations 2 and 5, we'll solve for the value of RBX and RBY. We'll use the same process, the method of elimination, but this time, I will eliminate the variable RBX. To do that, I will multiply the first equation by 5 and the second equation by 2. Now we are doing this so that RBX in both equations will have the same numerical coefficient so that it can be eliminated. Now we'll subtract the two equations to eliminate RBX. Then we'll have 0 minus 19 RBY equal to negative 377.5. Solving for the value of RBY, we'll get RBY equal to 19.87 kN. Substituting this value to any of the two equations we use, say equation 2, we'll have 2RBX minus 5 times 19.87 equal to negative 102.5. And solving for the value of RBX, we'll have negative 1.58 kN. Now, take note with the negative sign. That means that our assumed direction for RBX is not correct. We just have to change its direction in the free body diagram and RBX is still equal to 1.58 kN. To solve for RCX and RCY, we'll use equations 4 and 6. This time, we'll eliminate the variable RCY. And in order to do that, you have to make sure that RCY has the same numerical coefficient in both equations. So we shall multiply the first equation by 3 and the second equation by 2. To eliminate RCY, we will add the two equations. Now, some of you might be asking, why add? Well, that's because RCY in these two equations has different sign. One is positive and the other is negative. And you can only eliminate two numbers that are additive inverse of each other by adding them. That's why we are using addition here. Now, carrying out the operation, we will have 19RCX plus 0 equal to 255. Now, solving for RCX, we'll get RCX equal to 13.42. To solve for RCY, substitute the value of RCX to equation 4 or equation 6, whichever you like. You still arrive at the same answer anyway. So, we'll have 3 times 13.42 plus 2 times RCY equal to 20. Solving for RCY, we'll get negative 10.13 kN. Now again, we have a negative answer. This means that we have to change the assumed direction for RCY. But the magnitude of RCY will still remain equal to 10.13 kN. Now these are all the reactions we need. And the last thing we need to do is to plug in these values to our free body diagrams. But 
be sure that all necessary corrections, especially the direction of the reactions, are already incorporated in the free body diagrams. And so we'll have these as our final answer. But before we end this video, let's summarize things up. So what we did first is to draw the free body diagram. Then we find all the equations we need by using the summation of moments at these points. And then we solve for the magnitude of the reactions using these equations. And lastly, we plug in the reactions to our free body diagrams.